earlier I reflected on dream work and then tied it in with artwork, with poetry that I was doing, some dream poetry, and then also mentioned some research I had been doing about skalds, which are poets from Scandinavia and the old Germanic peoples. And I have a family history of woodworkers. Um, if you have been on IdeaPod for a little while, I wrote a, an idea about do it yourself. My one of my grandfathers, who you read about, um, with um, who was a photographer, also photographer, also made different wood objects. He, we have a rather large far family on that side of the family, and he made for each of his um, sons and daughters a grandmother clock. It's not as large as a grandfather clock, but um, so each of us has a has a memento that was made by him. And also my father um, is a woodworker. He does wood burning. Also in Lily, I mentioned, I believe it was Lily, about loons. And my dad had this hobby of carving different types of uh, birds and other objects as well. But also burning into the wood these, these etchings uh, to bring out the details of, for example, loons. So there's a little history there behind, I think it was Lily, um, where I mentioned a loon call. And, and also bringing back in the, when I was camping growing up, we used to go to places in northern Wisconsin and there'd be loons on lakes. So I'm very familiar with the calls of loons. I, I created my first design, um, burning birch. Uh, um, I found some, some pieces of wood in a craft store and it just kind of stood out to me since I had just written a, a poem about burning birch. The history of, of what um, these runes were all about, how each not only was a, a letter in an alphabet but also a symbol and represented a concept. And also they were mnemonic devices for storytellers or scalds, poets imagine these these keepers of history who would pass down these stories it was mainly oral history but to help them remember these stories you can imagine them carving carving them into these runes I was thinking also how maybe these storytellers as they're getting older we forget about this with all the multimedia that we're we are creating that many of maybe the, the objects in the past not only helped us visually, but tactily to, as well. Um, that tactile contact, if one of these old storytellers who was losing his or her sight, you know, to help him tell or her tell the story with these runes, you can imagine that person feeling the runes like braille and, and helping that person remember all of the details of, of a story. Um, or a poem, for example, and, and also I, with a lot of oral history and communities, tribes, you can imagine them also having songs that went along with, with um, these stories. So bringing in with, you know, my love of poetry, also um, my, and my family history of poetry, and also my family history of woodworking, and back in the day, bringing back um, also some a little detail about Dune. Uh, there is an individual in Dune that is playing with a little figurine. I used to carve uh, figures in, in wood. Um, I have scars to, sh to prove it. Uh, so I wasn't very good at it, even though it helped me whittle away the time. Um, but now I've, I've picked up my father's hobby of wood burning. I just created my first design, so I need a lot of practice. But also, you know, it helps uh, think about and reflect about not only this history that a lot of it was lost because we have records from later cultures that told us about this but not not so much an inside story uh, an insider's perspective perhaps of, of um, what kind of stories they came out of these so just I'm kind of unraveling all of the layers of history um, with that so my, my woodwork um, it's helping with artwork is also helping with my dream work so it all kind of cycles through um, and related to this hands-on do-it-yourself approach to things um, in education 
um, educators know funding is is slim in, in, a, in a lot of areas and so a lot of educators are do-it-yourselfers are hands-on as far as creating materials or testing out new t technology or tinkering with the creating activities and molding that to to different teaching styles and, and content yes. and creativity that comes from do-it-yourself um, also passes down into education a lot of and there's another point of the value of art and crafting things it isn't just carving a piece of wood or burning into a piece of wood or drawing a picture it's also those, those, those skills carry over not only with hands-on but also when you're dealing with virtual spaces and crafting and tinkering it helps you visualize not only so you when you move from something that you're crafting physically, you can also imagine forming something in virtual space.